have those open and transparent conversations and, and you just get started, you, you just do it. Um, and you do it through small incremental steps. And that's what we've seen over the course of the past couple of years. You address those concerns that, are t that need to be talked about like privacy, security, ethics, um, the fear of replacing people, the fear of replacing clinical expertise. You, you have those hard conversations and, and you move beyond those to, to solutioning. And um, that requires a lot of direct engagement uh, a lot of communications and also providing feedback loops so people feel as though their concerns and their voices have been heard. Um, you just get that conversation started. What we've done at Auctioner is set up an uh, AI Center of Excellence, which is a partnership between myself and the Innovation Office and our Chief Data and Analytics Officer, uh, Shashi Vangala. We have uh, developed that department as a as a sort of meta department, which encompasses several different disciplines and also creates a governing body, which is outside of that department in order to make sure that we have appropriate checks and balances for AI safety, equity, and bias, and uh, the appropriate level of supervision as we're designing and maintaining novel uh, technology and partnering with vendors. So all of those things, buying, we're buying technology, we're building technology ourselves, and we are partnering to co-develop. And at all of those life cycles, um, AI is a very important piece of that. When we are building this technology, we need to embed or follow design thinking. When I say design thinking, that means we are building the solutions not from our own perspective, but also from the perspective of the providers and the pr perspective of the of the pay of the patients. It had, they have to be very intuitive. Otherwise, if there is no adoption due to any reason, maybe because of trust, maybe because of poor outcomes or predictions, then the technologies will not be adopted. So it's very important to wear that design thinking process embed in when we build these technologies. Second part is human in loop. Uh, it's, it is just a human psych psychology that, that we don't want to have over-reliance on no matter how accurate the technology is. So what we try to build is human in loop so that right stakeholders, right humans have an oversight in terms of review, overwrite these predictions, what technologies are telling us so that we don't want to make them completely autonomous and making humans out of the loop. We never follow that principle. So we want to, we put a lot of emphasis in terms of putting human in, human in loop when we are designing these technologies and also understanding that we are made, we are learning by iteration. We don't reinvent the wheel. We should leverage the things that are working and evolve the ones that aren't. And I think if you think about how we go forward with AI and how we adopt AI, it's about following that path of making sure it's a problem we really want to solve today. It aligns to the organization. We utilize the organizational tools and processes that are in place, and we move forward to try to get those things done um, the best way that we can. try to go to where the, the don't set up separate committees and try to get doctors to attend. Try to find out where they're meeting, get on their staff meetings, go to med staff, try to sort of socialize your ideas and look for volunteers by kind of, you know, crashing their meetings and just getting a 10 to 15 minute point on the agenda to explain what's going on. That's those are two of the top things really around governance and, and, and building a coalition. And having an interdisciplinary group that's very focused on, on what the big picture is, understands um, policy and how to develop a policy for the organization, understands the need for um, education uh, is, is pivotal or um, just essential as this technology uh, moves forward. Most organizations have really strong clinical governance around how new processes or implementations or, or care pathways and how those things all kind of get built, how IT comes to the table, everybody kind of works together to try to drive towards an outcome. Those processes already exist. Most organizations already have strong data governance elements and think about how um, you think about how data is used within an organization, but also think about how, how data is going to be integrated with the long-term vision of trying to get to where they're trying to go. Organizations should leverage the functions that already exist versus trying to stand up something new. 
um, to avoid that whole non-productive period. The dilemma over here is how do you regulate something that is changing by every second and every minute? And that is being adopted also throughout the world, throughout the healthcare organizations, even before regulations. So that's the challenge even for, for the regulators and, and, and uh, building up regulations, policies and compliance framework. Even to understand and put regulations, you know, there has to be a, a digital literacy on AI literacy and maturity, whether on the regulator side or on the compliance side or on the policy side for for people to make that call, how do you regulate this technology? So this truly requires public sector, private sector and government entities partnering all together and coming together and regulating this correctly.